So today I've got a delivery from high footage and in this box, I do think I might have a light. So it looks like I don't just have this box. I also have those boxes. So iFootage have sent me out some stuff and I kind of like getting stuff. Sometimes you feel like you're overindulging and you have, you know, too much, too much gear, but I sort of need more stuff to be honest and it's nice to get it and, you know, well done iFootage, thanks a lot. As well as sending me on the three lights from their Anglerfish series, iFootage included some nice accessories which can be used in conjunction with their lights, such as telescopic support arms, Sea Star quick release plates, slimline monopod tripods that work with a round base, light stands, a Bowens mini adapter for the 60DN light, mini tripod, a few light boxes for the lights, and a couple of other little bits and pieces. Now, iFootage didn't randomly send me this stuff. I actually requested these items to be sent alongside the lights because I felt it was stuff that I will use. So if you're curious about any of the iFootage accessories, do leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. So now it's time to have a look at the lights. Mm. So I'm standing here right beside the bigger of the uh, a couple of lights that I got from my footage. This is the SL1 320DN. Now I set this up really quickly on Sunday with this new super deep parabolic style diffuser softbox here. And I'm liking it so far. Now one thing I noticed about this guy is <sighs> there's a nice clamp. It's very good at just grabbing the light. Uh, you don't even have to turn it that hard. That's just a delicate turn and it's, it's grabbing the light. That is a thing that's really annoyed me with other light boxes. The 320DN is iFootage's largest light available. It's a beast of a thing, and it comes in a fairly big bag. Though it's hefty, it's still much lighter than some of the 300 watt competitors, and it's pretty good value too at $750. It's 300 watts of power, so it emits a lot of light, and therefore it's gonna be ideal for those situations where you really need to crank up the light. Perfect for interviews, filmmaking, backlighting, green screen, and all sorts of different other applications. The breakout box is very solid, as is the light itself, and the cables connect very satisfyingly. Sometimes I do feel that the buttons and dials on these breakout boxes could be a little bit more substantial. If iFootage were making a newer version of this and they asked me for advice, I'd say, put a bigger knob on there and make the buttons a little bit more robust. And instead of having a push and hold button, just have a nice switch so that you know it's on straight away, where you're not sort of pushing it and holding it for a few seconds. But what I like about this light most is the actual tone of the light. There's something about the color that comes out of this that's really natural. And I footage have said that this is a really good replication of daylight. And I kind of trust them on that. I've noticed on other lights that I use that sometimes the actual light can be slightly purplish. But this looks like it's a more sort of organic, if ever so slightly yellowish tinge out of this light. It will also let you change the actual curve of the light. In other words, how quickly the light will kick in. Sometimes with these lights, it's nice to have a slightly exponential curve. So that's what it's on now. It's telling me that it's 60%, but realistically, it's not actually at 60% there because I've set it on that exponential curve. So it goes up like that. So you'll notice as I get towards the top end, it's gonna actually really crank it up. Now, if you want, you can take a shortcut and just press the button here on the top, the INT button, and that will toggle through five different strengths from 20% to 40% to 60% to 80% to 100%, which is very bright. And of course you have the dial as well, which will let you just literally dial in, because that's what it is, whatever strength you want. So there's no fan up until 50%, and then the fan will kick in at 50%. But the fan isn't that loud in this light. Now if I hit the INT button, boom, it's gonna bring me straight to 20, boom, straight to 40 the power out of it it's a nice even sort of light thanks to the actual reflector cone here 
if, the, if that's what it's called. It just gives out a nice kind of a beam of light. God, that's very hard to look at. I can't even look at the reflection there. So it's a very, very bright light. So would I recommend this light? I think I would. This is a great light. It's ideal for interviews. Whoa. <laughs> it's ideal for interviews. It's ideal for backlighting. And even if you point it up at ceilings or point it at walls, it makes a fantastic sort of, you know, just big diffuser light to sort of flood your scene and just give you a big wash of light. So I'd highly recommend it for that. Now you could opt for the cheaper 220DN, which will probably be more than enough light for most scenarios. And that'll cost you less than $500. Over here now we have the SL160DN, which is a much smaller light than the 320 behind me. But don't let that fool you into thinking that this little fella isn't powerful because there's a lot of whack out of this light, trust me, and you'll see that in a moment. Now, I gotta say about this light, since I got it, I absolutely love it. It's so small and light, yet so powerful. Now, it doesn't have the control box. It has a transformer, which you can actually hang off the light stand here. Now, speaking of light stands, this actually isn't a light stand as such. It's more like a sort of a microphone stand thingy. It's a telescopic arm that bolts into a nice plate on the ground. And this, again, is from iFootage. Now, normally, when you're using a light, you're gonna want a fairly robust light stand so it doesn't fall over. But with smaller lights and for situations in which you want to get closer to stuff like what I'm doing here, I think these things are just absolutely great. Now the build quality of the 60DN here seems to be pretty decent. So I'm not minding that. And as you can see there at 79%, um, we go right up to 100. There's a lot of power out of that. And that's more than enough. And considering it's only so light and small, I think this is gonna be a very, very good light for a lot of people. I'm now finding myself using the SL160DN as my main go-to light, especially when I want to travel compact and on the move, as it easily fits into my camera bag. You really won't often find yourself needing more light than what the 60DN has to offer. And it's listed at $189, about a similar price in euros, so it's really good value. The light uses a mini bones mount. Now I have the adapter should I want to fit the standard bones mount, but I really like the mini mount on this and the cone fits in nicely. You can power the 60DN over USB, but I haven't really found myself using that yet. iFootage also included a battery adapter for a V mount, which is gonna be great for outdoor stuff where you don't have power. Now the great thing about these LED lights is that usually they don't heat up that much and you can tape on diffusers and gels to the front without worrying about too much overheating. Now this gel might be a little bit small. We'll see what it's like. I think it's doing an okay job. And what that's gonna do there is just cool down the background a little bit for me. I've only one or two negatives on the 60DN. I noticed that at its dimmest setting, it's still a little bit bright. It would be nicer if it could ease in a bit more. When I put in 0.1%, that's literally 1,000th of the power of what the light should be. I noticed that it was still quite bright as a top hair light. As you can see here, it's kind of bright the way it hits the top of my head. I felt that the 320DN had more control in the less powerful settings. Now it's got two layers of diffusion in the light box there, but still I just felt that it was a little bit more gradual when unboxing this stuff, I had my son Ryan with me and I noticed something small in his hand and it was actually one of the knobs from the back of the 60DN. He had actually pulled it off. Now for its cost, this light is actually really well built, but certain little things like this, similar to what I said about the control box on the 320DN, I sometimes feel that these manufacturers cut a few corners with buttons and knobs and dials. I really think that they should just up the quality of this stuff, even if it means adding on a little bit to the cost. This little fella here, which is called the HL1C4, also an anglerfish light. Check out the little logo on the back there. It's a very, very affordable mini LED. It's plastic, but it's built really well. It's very solid and you can literally just bounce this off the ground and I'm sure it'll be fine. Now you might not think it, but this is actually quite a good light to use as a hair light because it weighs so little. You can just bang it up on a rod, bang it over your head, and you've got a lovely hair light. And I've used this already for hair light purposes and even backlight purposes. Look at that, looks really good. Now, one thing you'll see here is that it'll let me adjust the actual temperature as well. So from 10,000, it'll let me go right down into uh, the warmer temperatures here, which is almost like orange. So this is about 2,700, 2,800 actually Kelvin. At the time of filming this review, I hadn't realized it, but the HL1C4 it's actually a full color RGB light, so you can pretty much dial in any color you want. Plus it has some great presets and effects settings as well. 
Now the battery lasts quite well on this and I even brought it camping with me and used it to floodlight the inside of my tent when I was out in the wilds. And it was a great little thing to have because it's so portable, so light and very, very durable. At the super cost of just $50, this thing gives you a lot of light and flexibility for the money. It's incredibly cheap. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a complete no brainer to have a few of these in your camera bag as they'll be really handy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fire up the app, okay? This is the iFootage Lumen app, which will let you control the lights. Now, when I was first connecting the lights, it asked me to set up a project. I did just that and I called it Lights. So the app already has this information saved. So this first one is actually the C4, which is the little battery LED above me. The next one is the 60DN, which I've positioned behind me. Both of these are off, but I do have the main 320 key light with the soft box here, and that is at about a 45 degree angle, pointing a little bit down at me here. And if I want, I can just brighten this a little bit. Now, if I crank it right up, it's gonna be painfully bright, okay? I'm finding that difficult to even stand, okay? So I'm gonna go back down. Now, one thing you'll notice about the slider here is that it's quite sensitive at the bottom. And usually with a big powerful light like this, if you're doing setups like what I'm doing here, you're gonna be within the first sort of 30%. So what you can do is you can go in here and you can adjust the actual gain curve to different settings. And the best one, in my opinion, is what you call exponential. And what that's gonna do is, it will just gradually increase the light. So you have more control in the first, shall we say, two thirds. So essentially now it's at 60%, but that isn't the true 60% value of power of this light. Realistically, it's about 28%. Well, maybe 25%. So just bear that in mind that that's not actually 60%, it's much brighter than that. And likewise, I can do the same in the back. For now, I will just switch on the actual light behind me, which is the 60DN from iFootage. Now that's at 40%. Now I don't really need to adjust the curve on that exponentially. I can if I want, but right now it's just giving me a nice little glow in the background behind me here. My head is a little bit high for the frame. I might have to duck for this next shot, but what I'm gonna do is switch on the light above me. So I'm just gonna switch that on. Now you can see that they're all working harmoniously and it's very, very nice. Now, I did notice that when you adjust the top slider, which is all devices, say if I wanted to slide them down in line with the current percentage they are, that's not gonna happen. It's at 100% here now, so if I slide this down, it's gonna just grab them all and put them at the same percentage which is something that's a little bit annoying. I'm sure they could work around that uh, easily enough, but as of now, I'm not gonna really worry about that because I do have full control. So another thing I like as well is that if you wanna go into settings here, you can just um, click on effects and you know, you can do the usual if you want, fireworks. So now we have paparazzi and we can adjust the frequency and power and all that make it look really sort of realistic. I think it's quite effective. You know, if you were shooting a movie and you have a light in the other room, having the app is just really powerful. So working off music there, I don't know how good that is. It's kind of cool there, the way it's reacting to my talking. It seems to drop off kind of quickly. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so that is the app with the iFootage Anglerfish series of lights. I think it works great. I quite like it and I would definitely use it as I would use the lights. One last thing I'd like to mention in regards to my thoughts on iFootage as a company within the filmmaking and photography realm. To put it simply, I quite like them. I won't ever accept a product for a review that I do not like the look of, nor will I accept something that I won't feel I will use. And I really like what iFootage are doing. I think their accessories are really interesting and really, really convenient. So do check out the link in the description. It'll bring you straight to their website and you will get a discount there as well as support me as an affiliate. I'm thrilled with these lights. I'm gonna use them in all my videos from here on in. In fact, I've been using them for the last three months. This video has taken ages to do. So apologies to iFootage, but thanks at the same time. And thank you for watching the video, guys. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video and until the next one, it's over now from me. Take care guys, I'll see ya. All right, bye now.